It's an Audi A3, but not perhaps quite as you know it. Here we've the saloon version, designed to bring the brand's cool elegance within the reach of those who might find the only slightly larger A4 model a bit of a stretch. We all like the idea of good things in sensibly sized packages. In essence, that's what this is. You won't be expecting this A3 saloon to drive any differently to its hatchback model counterparts, and it doesn't. But that's no bad thing thanks to the stiff, light MQB platform underpinnings that help in making this car immediately feel lighter and more agile than you might expect it to. Now true, real driving enthusiasts might prefer the slightly sharper reactions of rival Mercedes CLA, but everyone else will probably enjoy this Audi just as much, thanks to lovely technical touches, uh, like the way that an electronic limited slip differential is built into the stability control system so the car turns more sharply into the bends. Audi has significantly upgraded the petrol engine lineup in this revised model, and at the foot of the range, the efficient yet powerful 150 PS 1.4 litre TFSI cylinder on demand derivative is really well worth a look. If you like green pump fueled motoring and you can stretch a little further, then your Audi Center will offer you a much improved 2 litre TFSI 190 PS power plant that as standard gets a freshly developed 7 speed S Tronic auto gearbox, plus the option of an improved quattro four wheel drive system. This same engine is also used in 310 PS guys in the S3 Quattro variant and if you still want to go faster at the top of the range there's a potent RS3 model with a five cylinder two and a half litre TFSI unit capable of 400 PS. Most A3 saloon buyers though will still want a diesel, possibly the 1.6 litre 110 PS TDI unit, but more probably the 2 litre TDI 150 PS unit we're trying here. That's a unit capable of up to 67.3 MPG on the combined cycle and up to 107 grams per kilometre of CO2. Here, Quattro four-wheel drive is optional, while at the top of the diesel range uh, lies a variant with a Pokia 184 PS version of the 2.0-litre TDI engine, and that's a derivative offered with the Quattro package and S-Tronic transmission as standard. If this variant takes your interest in the A3 model lineup, you'll probably approach it with a couple of ready-made preconceptions. Either that it'll be some kind of lightly shrunken version of the larger A4, or merely an A3 hatch with a boot added on the back. In reality, neither of these expectations hit the mark. It's very much an A3, but a subtly different one. 11 mils wider, 9 millimeters lower, and 146 mils longer than the kind of comparable five-door A3 Sportback that many likely buyers will probably also be considering. Now the changes made to this revised model are primarily focused on the front end, where the familiar single frame grille is now wider, more sharply contoured. Uh, the headlamps that flank it are flatter and more distinctive than before, with more modern xenon lighting replacing the old halogen units. Time to take a seat inside, and as before, the cabin quality you'll find here continues to set this car apart at its price point, with a really premium feeling of quality and class, emphasised here by these optional grey-stitched Napa leather front sports seats and these matte brushed aluminium fascia inlays. Uh, the defining feature of the dash remains these four air vents, styled to look like miniature jet engines, and made up of no fewer than 30 individual parts, including bright metal outer rings that are shaped for perfect grip. Uh, the two central vents sit above a smarter panel and ventilation controls. Now has a piano black finish. Uh, plus there's a restyled three-spoke leather trim steering wheel. It's what you can view through this though that probably represents the greatest change in this environment. Referring to a feature that has been fitted here, the optional Audi virtual cockpit. It's a pity you have to pay extra for it, but if you can, well, you get yourself a real cabin talking point. The setup replacing the entire instrument binnacle with a 12.3 inch colour TFT screen that's fully digital and customizable with smart 3D graphics and highly detailed effects. Anything this setup can't tell you will almost certainly be covered by the slimline MMI infotainment display that glides out from the top of the dashboard to deal with audio, informational and phone orientated functions that you can prompt via this chrome edged rotary controller in front of the gear stick. 
The retracting screen is now seven inches inside across the range and it now works as standard with the useful Audi smartphone interface that through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone connectivity allows everything that you access on your handset to be duplicated onto the slide out monitor. So let's take a seat in the back. Uh, certainly the two adults that will most regularly be carried here should be as comfortable as they would be in a comparable A4 saloon on all but the very longest trips. They'll also have slightly more legroom than they would in the A3 Sportback hatch thanks to this Body Styles extra 144mm of wheelbase. Finally, let's check out luggage space. Now, once you've lumped your stuff over the uh, relatively high sill, you'll find 425 litres on offer here. Another area where the wheelbase increase over an A3 Sportback pays dividends. There's 45 litres more here than you get in that hatch model. So, how to sum up? Well, this improved A3 saloon might look little different at first glance, but it'll certainly feel different if you specify the clever virtual cockpit technology and get to grips with the enhanced media connectivity. Otherwise, though, the recipe is much as it was before, and that'll see many continuing to like the statement this A3 saloon makes on their behalf. I mean, this car won't turn the heads of passers-by like a rival Mercedes CLA, but then that very discretion is a fundamental part of its appeal. As with any other A3, it's as at home in Belgravia as it is in Brixton, offering a democratisation of automotive luxury without a dilution of desirability. If you doubt that, then you've only got to get behind the wheel because the interior is where this design really strides apart. You could be in a luxury car. And of course, in many ways, you are. Just one that perhaps better reflects the times we live in. <laughs>